This is the last lecture on consumer theory using cardinal utility. And in the previous video, I had defined what is consumer equilibrium, the point where this person maximizes total utility given the budget constraint. And then we also derived a principle for condition of for consumer equilibrium, and that is the ratio of marginal utility divided by its price must be equal across all commodities. So if this person spends or purchases one through n commodities, this ratio must be equal across all commodities. This is a table that I had used in my previous lecture video, and we determine based on financial reality of this person when income equals $30 and price of movie and price of sodas equal $3. We figured out what a consumption choice is available. We copied the marginal and total utility numbers for both these products. And then we divided marginal utility of movies by its own price, marginal utility of sodas from its own price. And we, we determine what will be the best point for this person. And this will happen when this person purchases five units of sodas and five movies. And so we get consumer equilibrium. The point where my total utility is at a maximum. Now let us repeat that exercise when the financial situation of a person changes. For example, the income of this person, say, stays the same, which is $30. Price of sodas stays the same, which is $3. And the only thing which has changed as compared to the previous case is the price of movies. It has increased from $3 to $6. So let us repeat the steps that we had taken when we figured out consumer equilibrium with different financial numbers. Now, given income and prices, look at the choices available to this person. When this person decides to watch no movies, how many units of sodas can this person buy? It will be 10 units of sodas. If this person decides to watch one movie, that means this person has already spent $6 out of 30. And so what this person is left with is $24. And how many sodas can he buy with $24? It will be eight sodas. Let us look at another number. This person decides to buy two movies. So the money spent on two movies will be $12. So this person is left with $18 to spend on sodas. So he will buy a maximum of six sodas. And in this way, we list complete consumption choices available to this person. Now remember that famous table 1B. From there, I have copied the marginal utility numbers that correspond to these quantities of movies. And the same thing I have done for sodas. I have these marginal utilities associated with two units of soda, four units of sodas, and so on. And from that table 1B, I've also copied the total utility numbers for movies as well as sodas. And based on these total utility from movies and sodas, I got a sum of total utilities from movies and sodas. Then in this column, what I have done is I have divided marginal utility by price of movie, something we had done on the previous table as well. But now the price is $6, so we get these new numbers. Similarly, for sodas, what I have done is we have marginal utility divided by price of soda, and we know price of soda has stayed the same. So here are the numbers for marginal utility divided by price of soda. Now, look at the following. Here, the total utility is maximized at this level, which is 313 units. And this happens 
when this person purchases six units of sodas and two units of movie so this is the equilibrium point and how many units of movies are demanded at this point two movies how many units of sodas is demanded at this point it is six sodas and once again you can see marginal utility divided by price of movie which is 6.33 equals marginal utility from sodas divided by price of soda and so these two are equal as well so this point 26 satisfies both these things and we know this represents consumer equilibrium let us summarize all the information we have initially we looked at a budget constraint which was defined at income being thirty dollars price of movie being three dollars and price of sodas being three dollars based on this as well as consumer preferences what we found is the equilibrium point for this person happens when this person buys five movies and five sodas then we looked at another situation where income of this person stays the same price of movie increases to six dollars and price of sodas stay the same based on this new budget constraint what we figured out is at equilibrium this person will purchase two movies and purchase six sodas now look at the following price of movie increases what happens to quantity demanded of movies it has fallen and another thing you observe here is price of movie increases and quantity of sodas quantity demanded of sodas has increased just keep this bit with yourself as we look at some pictures on the next slide so here what we have now is here we have price per movie on the vertical axis quantity demanded of movies on the horizontal axis and we have this information when the price of a movie equals three dollars how many movies does this person watch five units when the price is six dollars per movie how many movies does this person watch uh, to get to the maximum total utility it is two movies so if we did this for other prices as well and we plotted these points and joined them and what we would get is a curve and this is the demand curve why is it a demand curve because we are looking at price per movie and quantity demanded for movie and what you find is this demand curve is downward sloping and in a way this is a rigorous proof of the law of demand and what is law of demand it simply states ceteris paribus ceteris paribus there is a negative relationship i'll just write relation relationship between price and quantity demanded of the same product so in a way this is a rigorous proof as to why the demand curve is downward sloping or a rigorous proof for law of demand now let us look at this from the perspective of sodas suppose i place price of sodas on the vertical axis and quantity demanded of sodas on the horizontal axis we know the price of sodas based on exercise has stayed the same three dollars when the price of movie was three dollars this person bought five sodas and when price of movie increased this person starts to buy more sodas or in other words there is an increase in quantity demanded of sodas when this happens we know we are looking at two goods which are substitutes substitutes this is a u substitutes <clears throat> now look at the following we have 
not done any detailed exercise for sodas but suppose we had done uh, something like what we did for movies we had done this for sodas as well we had looked at different prices of sodas and kept everything else uh, the same and what you would have found is there would have been a negative relationship between price of sodas and quantity demanded of sodas and or this is a typical demand curve which looks very similar to what we had done for movies so when price of movie increases this person buys more sodas so essentially what has happened is now the demand curve for sodas has shifted to the right shifted to the right and this again indicates the rightward shift of demand curve or an increase in demand for sodas and we know what is the relationship between sodas and movies they are substitutes or you could have one in place of another so this diagram shows shift of a demand curve as we have done this for sodas and we could have shown a demand curve shift when income changes once again for that we'll have to do a detailed exercise which i've decided not to but intuitively you can show uh, the circumstances under which a demand curve may shift to the right or to the left now this is a question which baffled a lot of philosophers and that is called the water diamond paradox look at the following water is considered to be essential for living and yet we pay a lower price for water compared to diamonds and diamonds are considered to be non essential for living at least for most of us and and yet we are willing to pay a much higher price for this and the way they resolved it is the following then that is all this is based on law of diminishing marginal utility and there is a link between price and marginal utility the price that we pay and the marginal utility we receive look at the following we consume a lot of water so what is the marginal utility we receive from the last unit of water however measured it will be fairly low diamonds is something we consume very little and when you consume something which is in smaller quantity that means the marginal utility associated with that must be higher and all this is happening because of law of diminishing marginal utility so since we consume fewer diamonds or we purchase fewer diamonds we are willing to pay a higher price for diamond though it is not essential for living is simply because the marginal utility we derive from purchasing a diamond is very high and as compared to water which is considered to be essential but it is abundant in supply and so so we consume a lot of it and the marginal utility derived from the last unit of water is low and hence we are willing to pay a lower price for water and this is how philosophers slash economists resolve the water diamond paradox and this completes our discussion of consumer theory Thank you for your time.